Welcome to Synthetic Wednesday. You option traders will know what I mean by that. Viking Therapeutics, more good news. Phase one trial, trading sharply higher. Do we have the meme stocks of meme stocks of deep meme stocks trading? We'll discuss that as well. Some earnings, nothing major, but we got a lot to talk about on this Synthetic Wednesday. It's pre-market prep. Welcome to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. This is a volatile puppy here. It's all about execution styles and strategies. All right, good morning, traders and investors. Let me get my charts up here. As opposed to yesterday, we are starting the day in the green a little bit. Not a super weak close, but we're up nearly 20 handles at 52.98. The buck back down under 104, down 17 cents. Bonds up a quarter of a point at 119 and 18 30 seconds. Crude in the 82 handle up 25 cents, 82.20. Gold 22.18.50, trading near that all time high made last week. Silver trying to get back in the $25 handle, up a dime at $24.99. And Bitcoin after a big old day yesterday. Only down four hundred eighty-five dollars at seventy thousand six hundred and forty-five. Let's bring in Triple D here. Triple D. We had the lower open yesterday. The buyers come in, having the higher open today. I don't know. They're like, wasn't a major dip, and this is not really a major rip. You think people are a little nervous that the end of the quarter is on Friday? Then you got PCE on Friday, and you got Powell speaking on Friday, and we're not going to be able to trade. I, th I think that the market isn't that nervous here at all. You're starting to see okay. just pockets of just flat-out risk on. The Bitcoin turnaround yesterday, which, you know, was in the gutter for about a week. Well, you know what? Just bang, bang, and almost right back near the highs. Speculation coming back into this market hard. NVIDIA, obviously, you know, continues to lead the charge. Even on the down days, it doesn't want to go down. Um, that looks like it's inevitably going to hit a thousand. I mean, nothing is you know 100, percent but you know we're 959 here now. We're winding up, um, and but it's like the stocks like GameStop yesterday, you know, started to take off. And again, you know, it's going to report Wednesday. Being long stocks ahead of the reports continues to pay the bills. So if you were long GameStop, congratulations here. But bring Aaron in here because you know he's talking about the meme stocks too here. You know, Reddit maybe kickstarts this, you know, with the IPO a few days ago. Wall Street bet starts getting hot. Reddit stock starts blasting off, goes up 30% yesterday. Is the meme stock trade back, Mr. AB? Yeah, yesterday, I mean, whether you were looking at Reddit, GameStop, like you mentioned, DWAC, all of these, you know, smaller stocks that trend on... Reddit and other places, you know, whether that be stock twits, message boards, Discord, uh, et cetera. I mean, all of them ripped yesterday. DWAC closed up more than 35%. I do got to correct you real quick, Dennis. Uh, GameStop reports today, I believe. Unless oh, is I it today? Have, unless I have my numbers wrong. Let me check real quick. No, you're correct. You are correct. I had it, I had it as, as Tuesday night, too. I just read my sheet wrong. So it is. It's tonight. Yeah, so GameStop, GameStop closed up 15% yesterday, up another uh, you know, few cents this bit. morning, a little bit this morning. We'll see if that trade continues today. Mm. I mean, based on past reports from GameStop, uh, you're, you're usually in for some fireworks. And typically, I, I want to say out of the last like eight or 12 reports or so, you know, they haven't done too well after the report. So if I was up on this stock trading higher, uh, you know, if I've already made some money on this, I might book some profits today just because... I don't know what, you know, the, the CEO is going to be able to say to really, uh, you know, propel this thing even further after it's up 20% in a couple of days. But yeah, I mean, the meme stock, that was the story of yesterday, really, just all of them ripping higher. Yeah. And I mean, there's just this market just gets the pockets, even when you're seeing weakness in certain areas. And we definitely saw some weakness in a few stocks, you know, even the overall indices not performing well. We've talked about the underperformance in Apple. There's always something picking up the slack. And even from the mega caps, you know, it's NVIDIA has always been helping, but Tesla helped in the last few days here, too. Maybe we should just start with Tesla. We'll get into this meme stock trades in a second. Yeah. But Tesla's got its own, you know, kind of meme stock type following here. It's starting to show some life. You know, I've lightened up my position here. 
Uh, but it's actually starting to show life. It could get if it could get back up over that 180, it starts to get interesting here. More news here today, A B. I think they were talking about um some pricing or something. What what was the news here today? Yes, yeah, so we got a couple headlines and and yeah, first of all, I mean to your point, Red, or, uh, Tesla still has that super high uh retail interest. We talked about this with Martha Stokes last week. The institutional ownership on Tesla is 46%, which is a lot lower than average, which shows you there's more retail traders holding uh holding Tesla compared to institutions. Bernstein maintains underperform on Tesla, lowers price target to 120. Um we also have let's see there's another headline I saw earlier. Let me go ahead and find that. But either way, I mean, yesterday you had a downgrade and Tesla ripped higher, closed up 3% yesterday. Uh, mm-hmm. A day where like bulls really needed to make a stand on Tesla because this thing's been weak even as the market, you know, on days where the market's touching new all-time highs, Tesla's still been struggling. So to see it have a good day in the face of bad news, we talked about this yesterday. When your stock stops going up on good news, that's a bad sign. And when your stock's going up on bad news that's a good sign so yeah it is uh you know maybe that could be a sign for a potential bottom in tesla that regardless of a of a lower price target and a downgrade the stock's trading higher uh the one yesterday was from mizuho the one today from bernstein of course so either way if you're bullish tesla this is good good sign the past couple days yep Mm -hmm. pair highs just under 183 so keep an eye on that if you're looking for a major move up the upside that's still five bucks away those were consecutive highs on march 8th march 11th so uh short-term trade you're looking at that for a target but we got to break this pattern here of uh you know just like getting these rallies and then two, two or three highs in the same area and then failing once again, a little bit of a bump. And that's where you ran into the uh, the, the pair of highs, just under 183. So that's your focus level moving forward here. Uh, maybe support here. If you're trying to buy it today, you might have to look a little dip to the top of yesterday's range at 175.24. Uh, and then Dennis, I don't know if the other news story you were referring to with Tesla, but Elon Musk did announce last night that they're starting a new policy where every vehicle delivered in the United States uh, the person delivering the vehicle is supposed to give the customer a demo of the full self-driving. So I think they're hoping that by they're showing that. The, yeah, by showing the customer like, hey, before we give you this car, check this out. Check out the full self-driving. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that's going to work. Where if the, is the guy delivering the car going to get the car with the customer and show, you know, drive around with them for a little bit. But either way, I mean, that's like a $10,000 add-on package that i think most people you know forego with tesla but maybe when they see it working and when they get the car they'll be like trying hey, to upsell you know? them. yeah they're trying to upsell them it's like you know when you when you're at, at the bar and you order a drink and they you know try to upsell you on the higher end tequila or whatever in the drink yeah. you know they're just trying to bump up the the sales a little bit or the but- double the off year of the double yeah, I mean, you try to stay away from that. But all right, uh, going to uh, Viking Therapeutics, other Woo-hoo! top headline this morning. We've talked yeah. about this stock a few times in the past few weeks. I mean, Viking Therapeutics getting into the weight loss game. Uh, they had more positive. Viking Therapeutics shares are trading high after the company announced results from its phase one multiple ascending dose clinical trial of an oral tablet uh, formulation of VK2735. So Viking actually had better results with this oral version of the weight loss drug um, than, uh, than who was it? Was it, was it? Yeah, it was better than Eli Lilly's. Yeah. And I think that's huge because most people don't want to be taking the injections and stuff. You put it into a pill that's a lot easier for customers to take. Viking Therapeutics trading up 15% this morning. There's a lot to take in here. I'm long Viking Therapeutics, full disclosure. I've been long it. We've talked about this. Um, bought it a couple of weeks ago. Kind of been everywhere with it. Reason I'm long it is it's 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 a cheaper shot. It's like a lottery ticket at weight loss because you're talking about a smaller company, $7 billion market cap. If they can continue to show positive results, so far so good. I mean, you know, obviously they're injectable that we were talking about a month ago was really good. This oral data seems pretty good. What really stands out is very few side effects. So where you're seeing side effects across the board, there was very few side effects from this early data. Now, again, we're phase one here on this trial here. So you're very early, you know, and there's going to be some money, obviously, the Vikings going to have to spend to continue to develop this dr- these drugs. They're dropping some money. But I'm just looking. I still keep thinking, like, if you're, you know, one of the big pharma, and you're not participating in this and you're trying to get it going, 
man, Vikings got to be a target. Like, I think a company like this, it's, you know, working, you know, and that's so far so good with the trials. Maybe they want to get the trials far, further along to make sure they're, you know, they're not buying nothingness if the trials start to not look good. But, I mean, so far the data has been excellent. Viking could really use a cash infusion to keep these going because, obviously, they're pre-revenue here. So, but, you know, we know how big this market is for these drugs. We saw the explosion market cap in Eli Lilly. If Viking could get one of these drugs to market... The company's worth a hell of a lot more than the seven or eight billion it's trading at. A uh, couple notes here. One, I mean, hard to trade something like this technically, right? Because news and drug trials is going to yes. move this. Uh, but man, you had that haircut, that pullback off that uh, that high. Um, what was that? That was nearly a hundred bucks. Uh, one day after it made that high, a uh, 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 big jump up. It hit ninety three thirty. Two levels. One, and I will discuss this technically. If you know, if you were scooping this up and looking for a fifty percent retracement to this move, you got more than that in the uh, pre-market as it traded up to eighty-three ninety-seven. So, uh, for the bulls, I like to see a whole seventy-eight and a half. And then also the other relevant number on the upside is real close to where that offering price, right? They jammed uh, some people got some stock at 85. I don't know what exact day they had and how long they held it. But uh, if they're having any second thoughts of it, it all, sometimes there's some overhang at those uh, former offering levels. That's 85. Didn't quite get there in the pre-market trading. But nice move up nearly 13%. People asking if I'm going to ring the register because it is a big pop and I'm up 12 points on it from when I bought it just a couple of weeks ago. But I didn't buy this for, you know, just I bought this as the potential that this is one, a target. And two, I think it's more of a lottery ticket play. Again, you know, I wouldn't put all my money in it because, you know, these trials could go south. You know, it's a long time before they're going to get to drugs, going to cost them some money. But at the same time, you know, this could be one that, you know, if, if they get one of those drugs to market. You could see this market cap significantly higher here. And I still think it's a target. So that's the commentary. Joel, you had a good point on a peer play here, a company that actually owns some of Viking Therapeutics. Tell us about that. I mean, I mean I'm trying to figure this out. The game pharmaceutical owns uh, 6 million shares at 7% of the company. Uh, they just reduced their stake a little bit on February 9th. So that was a little bit before the pop. Uh, in in Viking, it did get the corresponding. Not getting any love today. Uh, we looked at it. It's a very billion, thin. Uh, very yeah, thin. it's careful thin. if you're trading this. There's no market in the stock really whatsoever. So very but, thin. So be careful. Yeah, but it, it got the pop. The thing that I'm looking at is it got the pop with it originally, and it dropped. Right. Well, yeah. you look at the VK. So there was some tracking. It's only a seven percent stake, uh, but. You know, Viking got off the map before this, but Legan did it. So I don't know. It didn't really seem like there was any restrictions um, on the stock sales or they're just holding it. But uh, Legan, I, I mean, in my opinion, we'll see how that trades today. There should be. That is, couldn't there be some kind of arbor something? I mean, you think it would trade up a bit on it again? Yeah. It's so thin. Zero shares have traded. This is a very thinly traded issue. This isn't a stock that trades a it lot is. in the pre-market. So pre-market, no action. There's no offers on this. You know, there's a bid. There's no offers on this thing. We're 69. You know, we're, we're, we're there's just no market on this stock at all. So it, I think you yeah. got to wait till a regular session to really see. Again, don't just go send in market orders or don't go send any oh. no orders just to buy the offer because the best offer is up 12 bucks. So and it's not going to pop that much because, again, they only own a piece of it. But just keep that in mind. You know, Joel's giving you another way if you don't feel like playing the VKTX directly. You can play it indirectly through the LGND. The one issue I would have is, like you said, it popped up, you know, on the day the VKTX had the good news, but then it gave it all back and is actually trading lower than what it was. So I'm not sure that's own overall company fundamental. No. Because obviously, there's other things going on with Legand as well, but this is a very small company too. So just keep LGND in mind. Yeah, yesterday traded 107,000 shares. Uh, the previous two days were under 100,000 shares. So uh, not a trade by appointment only, but uh, if you're going to be swinging some size in that one, uh, just be careful that you're not the market yourself. Stay with this uh, weight loss theme just for one more yep, minute here, I Aaron. Biohaven BHVN was one that got a lot of love on Fast Money last night. The stock 
CEO came on CNBC talking about their weight loss drug as well. The stock popped from the CNBC just from being mentioned and and, the, and just coming on and doing an interview on CNBC. The stock popped ten percent last night. It's giving some of it back here now this morning because you know this wasn't trial news, this wasn't anything. This was just an interview. But obviously, the CEO saying some pretty decent commentary here and got the stock really off the mat. Um, uh, uh, you know, because really it hadn't really been rallying that much. Um, big pop for it last night, giving some of it back here. But there is, you know, other companies that are trying to work on this too. This is just such a huge market. You know, you're talking about, you know, you think about the weight problems that we have in North America, including Canada in that, because even myself, I mean, if you could just pop a pill and lose a few pounds, obviously you got to do a little bit of exercise with it. There's a huge market for that. Huge so that's market. Why, I, I like yeah, that. The huge market, cool. and pun intended, but there's, yeah, but you just think like I think of all these other companies that you know are not participating. You know, like we haven't heard anything really from Merck on it. Pfizer's just dropped the ball on everything lately. But Abby, I mean, you know, or, and, and we know, and I still think Amgen's going to be a player here. And Amgen's a well, sleepy that, play. I think right. Amgen will be a player here. Um, it's starting to perk up a little bit. So, uh, there was J.P. Morgan note. I know I've went on a bad tangent here today, but a J.P. Morgan note saying they thought Amgen was in itself worth $240 with no weight loss drugs whatsoever. But they've got multiple ones that they're working on there as well. So, I mean, I kind of like the Amgen play, 3% dividend. It's a more conservative play. Like a Viking Therapeutics, it doesn't work out. That stock could go down significantly because, you know, it's all in on this. Where Amgen's kind of a diversified way to play it. What are we going to say, AB? Well, I was going to go to Amgen next because, you know, you mentioned some of the side effects on Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk's drugs. And I don't know if it's technically a side effect because it comes when you stop the drug. Um, but one of the big drawbacks is that if you if you stop the WeGovy or, uh, you know, that then, that, and then you gain the weight back. But Amgen is, is developing a drug called Maritride that is or maritide that is supposed to keep, help you keep the weight off even if you stop the drug and they and amgen had some positive uh trial results in phase one moving to phase two and the other big benefit to amgen's version of this drug is you only take it once a month compared to once a week compared to these other ones that's pretty awesome and so again yeah amgen it, it, it's it's targeting um you know i was reading about it last night and it's you know some medical stuff where it, it works slightly differently than the way these other drugs work. So there's a chance that if Amgen's drug continues to move through this pipeline, um, that it might become more attractive to customers than what else is out there. And Amgen really, I mean, it, it perked up a little bit, like you said, but hasn't really ran. Hasn't had any love from this trade whatsoever. No. I, I, and I've been wrong about it because I bought the stock at 295, I think. I'm down about 15 points on. I'm still continuing to hold because I think, I think eventually it does start to get some love from this. I don't know the timing of it. But the one thing, and you know, people say this all the time, you know, and this is a little bit true in trading and a little bit untrue in investing. They're like, well, if you get the timing wrong, it's the same as being wrong. In investing, it's actually not. Because if you're not on margin, you can wait a long time on some of these positions <laughs> yeah. if you think. So I don't know when Amgen's eventually going to get some love here. But Amgen is a company that has a lot of money and they are working hard at this. And I believe they will eventually get a drug to market. And when they start talking about that, then you start thinking like, oh, wow, wow, this is a weight loss drug play too. The market isn't even putting Amgen on the radar. They're not giving them any love oh. at all. Like JP Morgan was saying, they're worth 240 without any of this. So you know, before, and, oh, I'll go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's what I was just saying. I mean, you're paying like n next to nothing for their opportunities for their weight loss drug. But again, you know, it's out of favor. I mean, the PE on Amgen, you know, is, is relatively low to all these other biotech players. So we know the two that have had the most love, obviously. and there's other players that are coming though. So just consider that. Even when you're an Eli Lilly here, you know, consider, you know, like Lilly's down three bucks on this news yep. here today. And they just buy Lilly back because they can't help themselves. Lilly will go down, they'll just buy it right back. But eventually there's competition coming here. Uh, just so, one technical okay. note on this BHVN here. Uh, you had a, a pre market high coming in at 62, or excuse me, after hours high, 6218. You couldn't have looked for a better number because the old time high in this has been 6221. So that 62 seller still persistent out there. So if you get a pop up to that area, of course, above that, you're breaking into new all time high territory. But if you were quick, maybe like Triple D and you saw that uh, CEO on, boom, boom, get a pop 57, 58, 59, pause at 60, 
boom, got all the way up, right? Just matching the all-time high there. So good level. Uh, I don't see how much kind of volume this thing trades. Uh, now this trades a million shares a day, so that, it's a little it's bit a market better market cap value. of Biohaven. It's a fun exercise because when you're just looking, you know, and just looking at charts, sometimes it's just consider how big these companies is. This is a very small company, too. 4.51 billion. So another lottery ticket play because you're looking, you know, this is a company I believe that has no earnings either. So you've got to consider all these smaller plays here. These are these are lottery tickets. So you have, you know, core holdings where you can get positioning. You know, Lily's already at market. It's not going to zero. Amgen has all kinds of other drugs. It's not going to zero. And then you have the speculative plays like a Viking Therapeutics, like a Biohaven that, man, if they hit, you could talk about a stock that go up three, four, five times where it is. They don't hit. They can go to zero. So these are the more like a call option. Consider the stock almost like a call option, except you're getting more information on and you continue to get information. But it's a call option that doesn't expire. Uh, real quick, before we move on from the weight loss, I did find the article about the uh, Amgen's Maritide. So patients who receive a single shot of the highest dose of Maritide lost up to 8.2% of their body weight after 92 days. So that was after just one shot. That suggests a single injection of the drug has a prolonged weight loss effect, according to the study. In the group that received multiple doses of the drug, patients appeared to maintain their maximum weight loss until around two months after the last dose. Their body weight started to slowly return. After that, still their weight was down as much as 11.2% lower five months after they received the last dose. So again, like I think that's the biggest problem with the current ones that are on the market is that people realize, oh, I got to keep taking this forever. Otherwise, forever. I put the weight back on. Whereas Amgens might come in and you can say, okay, Dennis, you, you don't need to lose you know that much weight, but say you wanted to shed a few pounds. You could just take one shot of this, have it off for a year or whatever it is. And I think that, again... Could be a big deal. So Maritide from Amgen could be a story to watch here. Um, and like I, I think that happens a lot where the, the the leaders bring the product out to the market. And then whoever's coming in second, the companies that are coming in later come in with a slightly tweaked, maybe even better product. And then it starts taking some of the market share. So again, just yeah. a story to watch. Um, we did I mean, my long-term portfolio, just last thoughts on this, is positioning for two major themes. When I look at the stocks that I'm holding in the long-term AI portfolio, and drugs. AI, not just drugs, weight loss drugs. You know, weight I'm focused drugs. on two major themes here. I think those two themes continue to be a story into the next year and into 2025 and into 2026. So, you know, the way I'm playing, I've got some Viking, speculative play. I've got some Amgen, which is a more safer play of playing. And again, the stocks can go down. They can still go down. But Amgen, I don't believe, is going to zero. Um, and then, you know, the AI plays we've talked about a lot, but just feel like NVIDIA is just in the best place of all of them. Uh, going back to Biohaven, do you guys know why it dropped in 2022, like 90? Per was that because, like, a drug didn't make it through the pipeline or something? Maybe. Uh, oh, I don't going, see like, that. All I don't see that drop. Where are you looking? I O B H on B H V N and uh, let's see. I only Remember? got it around. Six. Yeah, I think it reorged, or oh, it wasn't yeah. even like I'm not even sure. Like I have it around at it's six dollars just starting trading in 2020. Yep, in September. Of but maybe there was a reorg in there because I kind of remember this stock. I, I feel like I remember really? this stock farther than 2022. Maybe this I'm what, wrong. This is what I'm looking at right here on on the Google charts. It's yeah, 92 percent drop. I think you had a reorg here or something, and maybe the chat knows. I don't follow the story closely enough, but I remember this stock before 2022. So something happened. Aaron. I'm not sure what it was. Um, all right. Well, moving on from the weight loss story, we did have some news from UPS. Of course, UPS traded higher last week on the heels of FedEx's report. UPS trading higher again this morning after the company uh, provided 2026 financial targets that I guess the market liked. I mean, I don't even, I don't even know what I'm doing this weekend let alone 2026, but I guess UPS knows exactly how much money it's going to be making in 2026. Stock trading higher, about 2% here. Uh, we talked about potentially selling that rip last week in FedEx. Would you guys be selling the rip here on UPS? Maybe not because we aren't getting much of a rip here. It's early. UPS valuation is a little bit higher, but the dividend actually is pretty good too. And again, you know what really has hurt UPS and FedEx performance is that Amazon just doesn't use them anymore. They're delivering their own packages. 
Um, maybe they use them to a certain extent, but for the most part, it's just, you know, not the way it was. So UPS, so they had a premium in these stocks and that's come back out. UPS forward PE is 18. FedEx has always been lower. Let's see the forward PE on FedEx is only 13. So these both trade under a market multiple here, at least if you're comparing it to the S&P. But, you know, it's it's growth, you know, like we're not, Amazon just continues to, you know, dominate the market and they're not delivering really packages for them. So that premium has come out. Does that mean these are sales? I mean, you know, FedEx at a P of 13 is still a pretty cheap stock. You know, do we believe that people are still going to buy stuff and they're still going to be delivering packages? I do. You know, maybe they got to get into the drone delivery and they're going to be all of drones delivering and doing different things. But I think, you know, longer term, these two companies are still undervalued. You know, I think I heard that um, Taco Bell or some places is uh, delivering food by drones now. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I can't. I heard, just heard that on the radio. Uh, big Pop. I think it was a joke. No, April it wasn't. Fool's Day? April yeah. Fool's Day is coming, Joel. It was no, that is. Yeah, we got to be I, careful. No, no, no. no. <laughs> no I think I, it's coming. I, I, I'm, I'm in the drone company, AVAV. I'm still on that thing. So I'm invested in that, too. I'm in all these storied stuff. I think drones are for real. I think, you know, it's not just about drone delivery. Obviously, AVAV works on a lot of the drones that are used in. Uh, you know, obviously a, a lot of military, you know, uh, applications here, but could it eventually be delivery services? Could we All DoorDash, right. you know, some of these things using drones? Sure we uh, could. Sure we five, could. Five days ago, uh, DoorDash begins delivering the Baconator by drone. That was five Show me this stat. Where are you reading that? I just, I, I read it on the, it's on the same call in, here. In the I'll... chat, they have it too. Are you saying it's in Virginia? Yeah. yeah. There it is, your baconator. Well, there you go. So I guess they're and testing if you're lucky it. Enough, it was Wendy's that I Who heard. makes that drone? If you're lucky enough to live uh, near uh, the Wendy's in Christianburg, Virginia, I don't know where that well, is. Well, that makes sense because it's probably near all the defense companies and stuff. Like near. Yeah. Well, there you know. it is. Woo! There it's coming in. They just dropped the baconator. <laughs> just like that bacon's so heavy, though. I hope it don't crash. Well, is that all right. for real? We went from <laughs> that's we, badass. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, is this so, a joke? Tangent? No, it's not. It's Tangent Tuesday, even though it's Synthetic awesome. Wednesday. I, I love before. the drone story. It's not AVAV Wednesday. I, oh my that's gosh, we are all I love over the, the place. Story. I don't oh. know. I don't think AVAV is delivering those ones, but I love the drone story. Final drone? note. That's it. Final three themes. Now I'm investing all right, all right. in weight loss. Although I don't know how much the Wendy's Baconator deliveries with drones are going to help the weight loss. <laughs> the drones and the AI, let's go! Uh, out of technical note, uh, there's a triple top in UPS at 161.5. You snuck through that in the pre-market, uh, getting all the way to 162. So, buck and a half away, now you got to resurface because all the people that bought it there are going to be saying, oh, I, maybe I shouldn't have bought this at 161.5. But that's a level. And then on top of that, um, you also get, you got room up to 164. But remember, this is UPS. And it moved, how much did it move the entire day yesterday? The entire day yesterday, it traded moved two dollars and thirty cents. Now you've already had like nearly a, a a six point range. So keep that in mind. FDX, we did talk about the fade. It just wasn't a great day in the market on Friday. They reported good earnings. The market was not not super weak. We had a little bit of a choppy sell off. These are the hardest formations to trade because you're always thinking about a gap fill. And then it pulls an oracle, right? Oracle. Ah, pops up. Okay, we're going to, no, we're going to go back and make a new all time high, come back. So these are tough trades, but uh, I do like that 161 and a half, 162 in UPS. And uh, like I said, we get a UPS or FedEx almost every day. So we're, we're doing the best we can to help those companies. I know. They all show up in my, the Amazon truck show up, the UPS truck shows up, and the FedEx truck show up. They all know each other. And the mailman's oh, yeah. been coming really late. I don't know what the deal is with that. Not getting their mail until really late, but uh, there's a postal update. Drones. Um, so we talked Durable about. Goods just came out. Do we care? Uh, well, I'll, I'll check those numbers real quick, see if the market's moving on them. But we talked about uh, weight loss drugs. Okay, durable goods came in at 1.4% versus 1.2% estimate. Co core durable goods month over month for February came in at half a percent versus four tenths of a percent estimate. Prior was negative three tenths of a percent. So 
Uh, I guess some, uh, some some positive data there, I guess. Um, I, again, I don't know how much the market really cares about the durable good, goods. Or, um, we talked about weight loss drugs. And maybe the reason there's such a high demand for weight loss drugs is not only because now we're getting <laughs> Baconators delivered straight to our doorstep, but now you can go to McDonald's <laughs> and not only get a Big Mac, but get some Krispy Kreme donuts with your Big Mac. Man, that Picker sounds amazing. D-nut. Krispy Kreme is trading higher more than 15% this morning on news of this partnership with McDonald's. Uh, I mean, clear, you know, benefit here for Krispy Kreme. You you get to sell your donuts at McDonald's, one of the probably the, the, the chain that sells the most food in the United States. You always see those stats of like who buys the most potatoes in the United States and it's McDonald's by a long shot. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Krispy Kreme's donut sales like triple just based on this, on this partnership. Um, Again, I mean, that, that's good news for you, Dennis, right? Your weight loss drugs should do real well now that people are going to be able to go get some donuts on top of their Well, business. yeah, and, you know, my dietary habits are more to be desired here. So I've actually tried the donuts from McDonald's, and they are disgusting. I mean, this was a smart move by Mickey D's as well because my daughter, maybe my daughter, she's like, see, so they offer like these four donuts, which they basically had don't even bake within the store. They just reheat them. And I tried it, and I was like, that is one of the worst donuts that I've ever had in my life. So obviously McDonald's knew that their four donuts that they were serving were really bad. So I think the partnership works both ways here. This helps McDonald's as well because their donuts were terrible. Um, you know, obviously McDonald's stock isn't even going to care about this. Yes, but it are, is you trying, are you trying to get deported? For eating, oh, not eating Tim Hortons donuts? Yes. Yeah, yes. they don't like that when you don't eat yeah, Tim Hortons. Yeah, yeah. Tim Hortons donuts I mean, are pretty good. Jim Cramer, yeah. when they've made fun of them before, but I tell you, the Tim Hortons donuts are pretty good. The little Tim Bats, they're pretty good. I had a really bad one from Tim Hortons actually in the last couple of weeks. Like, Did I, you? I, you I, have? I, well, I think it was just like a couple of days old. It was just a classic like donut with sprinkles on it, but it was kind of like stale. And I was like very disappointed because yeah. someone was like, take it oh. back. <laughs> Uh, my half-eaten donut asked for a refund. Oh yeah, I would. I'd be like, this, this is terrible. Like, yeah, yeah. Joseph, yeah. give my money back. This is terrible here. Fifteen sixty-seven. You got a. Uh, you got some nice confluence here uh, with your your after-hours high or pre-market high comes in at fifteen sixty-seven. You're already back up at the top of the page. You know the golden rule of technical analysis: buy the bottom of the page, sell the top of the page. While well, the top of the page here comes in at fifteen forty. But my main question to Dennis in the chat also is: if you if you had a choice between a uh, Krispy Kreme donut and a hot cherry pie at mcdonald's what would what one would you take crispy crispy cream donut all do the way the crispy cream the, donuts are awesome do they still i mean have the hot cherry pie? they're not healthy for you you know and obviously you know the health conscious consumer i don't know how health conscious we are it was always the price of these donuts you know it, it, it opened up so what's the story of crispy cream in canada and it didn't go over well we had windsor you know i'm from windsor originally across from detroit and they opened up the Krispy Kreme donuts back in the day. And it was a lineup across, you know, like just a huge lineup. But at that time, a dozen donuts at Tim Hortons was six bucks. The same dozen donuts at Krispy Kreme was 12 bucks. I'm like, holy, they can't be double. They can't cost twice as much. They taste better, way better than Tim Hortons. But they can't cost double. Have they bought, brought the prices of those donuts down? That is my question. Are they still, you know, over a buck a donut? Because that's, you know, I guess maybe we're a lot of years later. Maybe it's acceptable to pay a dollar a donut here now. They're, they're probably, what's it cost for it? Somebody, somebody knows. No what's idea. it cost for a dozen Krispy Kreme donuts? What's it cost? I'm looking it up right now. Producer AB is on it. I do remember in a... Uh... Which here's what I'm kind of curious about with this partnership, because from what I understand with Krispy Kreme is they're kind of regional. Like there's not Krispy Kreme donut shops everywhere you go. So how are they going to get all the donuts to like, is it going to be only certain McDonald's that are close enough to Krispy Kremes? Or are they going to start shipping them all over the place? I don't know. But in St. Louis, they used to have a deal where if the Cardinals got 12 hit, if they got if the Cardinals got a dozen hits in a game, you could go to Krispy Kreme and get a dozen donuts for like three ninety nine dollars or something. So I would, I would wait until the Cardinals had a good game, got 12 hits, and then drive like 20 minutes out of my way to pick up a dozen donuts. Um, and that was a cost-effective way to do it. But I don't know about the, the normal going price. I'm finding it out right now. The Jesse in the chat is saying 18 bucks for a dozen donuts. No way. Donuts. There's no way. That's way too much. a lot of money, money man. Um, all right. Well, it money. is 8.35 a.m. Eastern. We've got Christian Tharp, CMT, hanging out backstage from T3 Trading. Let's give Christian our very special pre-market prep welcome and catch up with Christian when we get back.
All right, Christian Tharp, thank you for joining us on Free Market Prep this morning. How you doing? Doing good. I was really enjoying the uh, Krispy Kreme conversation. Well, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Good donuts, bad donuts? Well, you like them? I, I think Krispy Kremes are so indulgent. I mean, I can't go into like the gas stations around here. They always have like a little Krispy Kreme and it is extremely difficult for me to walk away from just a basic Krispy Kreme. But we go to Krispy Kremes every Saturday. It's uh, Whoa. it's my girl's treat after uh, jujitsu. We go through the drive through and uh, get Oh, them. you know what they cost then, Christian? We were trying to figure out what do they cost? How much one of those donuts? Well, I think Jesse was right. I think like for that does, I think it's about 18 bucks. Wow. But if you get one of their specialty donuts, it's like three or I think $3 or something like that, which is- $3 donut. Yeah, well, it's the ones that are like more, you know, they got icing more and indulgent. like the girls like the Valentine's Day ones or the St. Patrick's Day ones. But uh, yeah, those are more of the three dollar ones. But <laughs> that and the Baconator, I'm really I, I was enjoying the conversation. <laughs> Weight loss, bacon. drugs, Baconators and Krispy Kreme donuts. What a combination. Well, just All over that. Like looking out my window one day and just seeing Baconators drop, you know, in the neighborhood. <laughs> this seems pretty incredible. I mean, I'll do you know if you're health conscious or not, because it's, there's that Wendy's drone again. It's the second time it's been there today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the there trade. Amazon, there goes on. the Baconator. So. All right. So we, you know, we, we probably got you a little hungry this morning, Christian. So sorry about that. But let's uh, let's talk some stocks. Let's talk some trades. What have you been watching? What have you been trading? Gotcha. Well, uh, I came in today. Obviously, I think last time we spoke, I was on a vacation, uh, you know, uh, showing a little bit, focusing more on markets. This time I decided to do some roll up the sleeves and do some uh, a little stock of Palooza here. So I brought a handful of stocks that we could look at uh, stocks that might be on the verge of breaking out or breaking down that um, your listeners might want to throw on the radar, starting with uh, Ford, you know, ticker symbol. Uh -huh. F. Nice little, um, you know, I've got a lot of students and members that don't necessarily like the NVIDIAs and SMCIs that we trade or the Teslas and like that kind of nice, slower moving, uh, easy. And Ford has been, has, has made it as clear as possible here that, hey, if I can get through that 13 or if I break below that 12, you probably have an opportunity for, for a buck, right? Maybe a buck and a half. Uh, especially if you get to that 13, I think the high maybe takes you the next, the next range, the next level up might take you to around 14 and a half. Uh, so, uh, but that 13 is such a great little breakout point. If you could get through it, I think those that, and even trading options, if you look at some of the options there, they're, they're relatively inexpensive. So we threw this on our radar just this week. Uh, yeah. GM's been I mean, we talked to yesterday. Yep. Or, yep. Like just seeing the same setup. It just looks sleepy and it looks like it wants to go here too. And again, you know, not just because they look like they want to go doesn't mean it's going to go, but it starts getting up over that 13. I'm with you, Christian. I think it actually looks pretty good from a trading perspective. Yeah, very much. And, and, and I like things that are very crystal clear like that. Um, you know, what I try to do is uh, clean out some of the clutter and, and, and make the decision making process at least easy so you can focus on the hard part. Right. Like the the, the risk management, the, the discipline, the emotion, all those things. Uh, as I was like, say, hey, look, you know, I can't get through 13, can't get through 13. Can't. Get oh, look at me. I got through 13. I think I'm going to go long. Right. So uh, another one along that line would be JetBlue. JetBlue. Now that's one you. Check out oh, that yeah. little. I don't know sets up. Not bad. Look at that little 750 resistance up there. You know, is Uncle up. Carl in here? Joel, you know, it was Uncle uh, Carl. I in don't here? know what he's been doing. I, I don't thought know he was. Carl. AB, Christian, you know, I thought Uncle Carl recently took a stake in this, didn't he? Somebody did. I Who was it? it? Chat knows. Portnoy. It was Portnoy. No, no I was didn't. Not... it wasn't. No, I don't know if Portnoy is in he there, bought, but he of actual. Well, like, he was in Save. He, he yeah. bought oh, Save. Sure Portnoy yeah. might be in there, but I thought Uncle Carl got in here. Did you get down and dirty in this? Sorry, just going on a tangent here. I think he did. Didn't Carl Icon already have a, a big story where he tried to invest in an airline? Elon says he... yes in the chat. I'm pretty sure Uncle Carl's in here. Elon Musk? Uh, let's see here. Carl Icon. We're just verifying. Uh, we're getting a couple yeses. So, Chris, before yeah, we. I think so. Before we get back, he's in. To he's in. Oh, so, got, get... so, so, Christian, you got Uncle Carl on your side here too. That's solid. Is that a good thing? Yeah, <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> I'll let the I'll let the audience decide that. But uh, but yeah, that was that was another one that I kind of popped up. Somebody had asked me about American Airlines, and I remember seeing that chart on JetBlue. I'm like, ah, JetBlue looks pretty straightforward. You know, little little problem at 750. Pop through there, get yourself a nice little dollar, dollar and a half run over the coming weeks or such. Especially with the the market. Apparently never going down again. <laughs> so I thought that that set up pretty well. 
Uh, before we get back to the stock of Palooza, Christian, we should mention, uh, you know, if, if you guys want to get some option trade callouts from Christian, scan that QR code in the bottom of the screen. I'll also throw the link in the chat. Christian, what can people who sign up uh, for this free lotto trade a week, what do they get? Uh, it's, it's an, uh, we start with like just a nice little uh, uh, like a trading education, just like a training of what that is about. Um, and what the the corresponding service comes with, it's intended to be, and I think we may have talked about this before, more of like a fun type service. It, it's tended to be, <clears throat> hey, I've had a, I've had a good week. I've got a few extra dollars. Wouldn't mind taking a shot from a Thursday going into Friday. These are the ones where we aim for these very very big winners. But of course, more often than not, if not always, you know, the entire amount of capital is at risk there when you only have that one day and. If you're if you're trying if we're trying to get like a nice three five ten dollar pop from a Thursday going into Friday and we go three five ten the other direction you know you pretty much threw that money on red and lost what we're trying to do is you know you know throw it on red and win and so it's kind of it's supposed to be fun it's definitely not an investment it's not something where you're kind of growing wealth uh, we do we do we do our fair share we profit but uh, it's uh, definitely not necessarily for the faint of heart that are looking for that fundamental story <laughs> but mainly but, options right you're talking mainly options plays yes. on these okay yeah okay that was yeah. asked in the chat okay you bet all right let's get back to the stock of palooza we talked uh <laughs> jet blue we talked ford what's what's next on the list christian well let's look at a couple on the flip side let's take a look at biogen biib seeming to having a real tough time getting off this 215 level at the bottom yeah and with a market that has been non-stop for five months uh, you can see right up there, upper right hand corner, just keeps coming down there and sure looks like the basic uh, formation of a continuation head and shoulders there possibly as well. But bottom line is, I would say whatever's above the level is not near as important as the level itself. So if we if we break below that 215 area, I would sure think that uh, 200 at minimum is coming on this stock. It's this hated. is the one this is the one that's in the Alzheimer business, right? Yes. I always forget. Yeah. Yes. It's got a lot of other drugs there, too. But. But the Alzheimer's stock is one of their main, um, or, or Alzheimer's drug is one of their main reasons the stock got the big pop a couple of years ago. PE is 14. Like, I mean, this stock has been hated for a long time. Again, so many of these big major, you know, say biotech companies or major pharma have dropped the ball on weight loss. And if you're not in the weight loss, they've been throwing you out. In Biogen, I don't even think they're on the radar. Like, Biogen should be one that should go buy Viking. Try to get back on the radar here. But that's a side note. I, I agree with Christian here. I'm actually long the stock. I've had it for like 20 years in my long-term portfolio. It's been okay for 20 years, but I tell you, for the last 10, it sucked. <laughs> so I'm kind of with you here, talking against my book here, but it does look like it's ready to break down. Yeah, yeah, and it, it provides a nice little short-term opportunity for those that are looking for that swing trade type of you know uh, uh, setup. Uh, again, it seems like the most obvious target you can see in the monthly there. It seems like the most obvious target on the way down would be 200. Um, you can grab yourself a nice little 15 point drop and, and call it a wrap. So we kind of liked the setup. Um, even worse, maybe possibly looking than this is HIMX. Um, been sitting on top and you'll see here uh, pretty good. Gosh, I think uh, what was it? several months you can see sitting right on top of this like five and a quarter area. And, you know, certainly wouldn't get short this yet or anything. But, you know, when you put it in context of a market that has done nothing but go up, right, mm -hmm. for, for, the, for this period of time, it kind of makes you wonder how much of a market pullback or decline would it take to bring that thing below that five and a quarter, right? So take out that five and a quarter, I would think no less than $4 is coming, but, uh, you know, been, been stuck there for a while. So you could also look at this and say, I'm going to go long at five and a quarter if you wanted. But, um, you know, I prefer to, you know, kind of maybe focus on the, the stocks that are keeping up with the market, not the ones that are struggling to do so. But this seemed like a pretty straightforward setup as well. Um, all right. Do we have any other ones to the short side? Are we going back long here? I got one that uh, is pick your poison. Las Vegas Sands. Ooh, oh, LBS. You gamble on this one. Yeah. Take a look at the <laughs> nice little, nice I little descending it. little triangle we got here lately. Look at that cute little thing sitting on top of 50. Yep. All right. I've uh, been testing that now for, you know, about two months, just sitting on 50, sitting on 50. And you got a nice little trend line running off top of your three peaks up there. So we're watching this. I think our trend line right now sits in the general 52 and a half area. Uh, so if the stock can kind of, you know, uh, pick up its feet and get going, break up through that top side, call it again, 52 ish, then we might look at a long play. Uh, but if it were to break down, wind looks pretty good too. Pretty good setup there as well. Uh, but a failure to hold 50 would lead us to believe 
like you can see that same type of trend line run across the top. Uh, very similar stuff there. But uh, Las Vegas Sands getting a buy rating this morning from Mizuho. They're seeing strength in Macau, and they are uh, buy rating with a seventy dollar price target here. So it's getting a little bit of love. It's up about fifty cents in the pre market just on that Mizuho note. Nice, nice. But yeah, uh, so you know we'll kind of sit back and wait and see which way this thing breaks, and that was gonna, that was going to be our play on this. All right, well, oh, Christian, we got a couple minutes left if you have any more. Uh, I just yeah. want to, I just have one question for yeah. him, uh, Christian. We were just talking, and I know you've you've done some biotechs in the past, and we're looking at this Viking Therapeutics, um, and in contrast to Legan, who has a stake in it, uh, doesn't really seem to move lockstep. Do you have a, uh, a reason for that? Is that something you filed at all, or are we just going to have to let the price action play out for itself? Well, that was, that's typically how I would handle it. You know, just let the price action play itself out. Um, I know for me, everything's about uh, when I look to trade, it's um, so when new, say, members or students come under the fold, you know, it's very easy for me to put up a chart and I've already got the lines drawn and, oh my gosh, that is so perfect. And that's exactly, I, 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 I understand that too. And then what a member or student will tend to do is then go out and look at some other stocks like, wow, I don't see those things. Exactly. So what I tend to encourage everyone to do is go find if you want to trade with that kind of very simple approach, breakdown, breakout, uh, nice little consolidations. Then what you have to do is actually seek those out. So, for example, it's it's not a coincidence that all five of those stocks that we looked at today have these perfect little, you know, breakdown and breakout barriers. Right. That's why I picked them. So for yeah. me, it's the same thing, regardless of, you know, you get stocks. It's kind of like SMCI has been in the news a lot. But if I didn't look at it and I can't find that simple way to kind of say, all right, this is exactly what I would do on there, then I tend to shy away from it. So although I know this has been in the news a lot, it's been a little bit harder for us to find where we would or would not want to, you know, kind of uh, uh, grab a hold of it. Uh, so we, you know, I, I follow it, meaning that it comes up a lot in our in our rooms and stuff like that. But uh, trading it, we have not done. Um, all right, Christian. Well, it's been a pleasure to catch up with you again. I'm glad we caught you this time while you're not, you know, busy on vacation. How was it, by the way? You were down in Florida, right? Oh, yeah, it was great. It was 80 the whole time. Not, not much oh, of nice. a drop of rain. You know, those you know, those little lizards that are running around everywhere. Yeah, yep. everywhere. My daughter, we've been going down there for six seven years now my two daughters try to catch those every time never do but my oldest who's 11 finally caught one this time and we kept it with us for four days wow. <laughs> it was your pet yes did you get her a net or something or was she just using her hands she's very determined she was using her hands quick she went, she went straight quick. head first like homer simpson into the bushes you know to get that thing <laughs> and, uh, came out. and the funny thing is, is it became somewhat domesticated by day three. It was just right up here on her shoulder and she'd be, Oh my gosh. She had in her hand. And, and at one point I got a picture where it rolled over on its back. Like it wanted its belly rub. rub so, <laughs> so I couldn't believe it. I was like, there's just no way this is, you know, but you can imagine what happened when I told her we were not taking that back on the plane. Oh, <laughs> had to have catch. It was good. It was a you good. You could have nice gotten it through break. security. I mean, you could have gotten it, you know, oh, yeah, they love that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, Christian. Well, again, thanks again. I'll drop that link in the chat if you guys want to want to get some more options trades from Christian. We'll catch up soon. Enjoy the rest of your day, Christian, and good luck on the trades. Thanks, guys. Have a great one. You do thanks, the same. Christian. All right, guys. Again, that was Christian Tharp, CMT from T3. Shout out T3. Always sending us some great guests with some great. They're all guests. awesome. Like all everyone that comes from T3, just seems like they are just educated. Those are great traders over there. A uh, little bit of fade. I think our durable goods was a little hotter than expected. I think I just yeah, saw that out leak, of my quarter of the eye. Yeah. PLT um, is down, almost down now. It's giving back. It was up a little bit ahead of that number. So, you know, this economic data, they're looking at it all right now because you got, you know, Powell talking three cuts. And then who was, who has said only one yesterday? Me. Somebody said only one. Who was it? I, I said me. Somebody I said only know. one. You know, some Fed official said only one cut yesterday. They all contradict each other. It was probably you know, Bullard. The he's been one, the dovish ones. Who was it yesterday? I'm gonna guess Bullard. He seems like he's been the well, one. He's always, I don't think it was Bullard though. Bullard's always hawkish. Which is Who funny because his name is out here. Somebody it, said one yesterday. That's his name is Bullard. One. You'd expect him to be more, you know, help the bulls a little bit, but he, I guess he doesn't. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't no. care about that. But Apple trading down here again. Your cause for your leak here, Joel. Man, Apple just cannot find 
any love whatsoever. We got some news here on Apple. We're going to go grab that for you right now. But Apple, which was trading higher here this morning, has now went to the red. Once again here, grabbing that headline as we grab them live. Well, I, I kept so, I China I, iPhone I, shipments fell 33% in February. This coming from Bloomberg. When did State that hit, Dennis? Um, about 10 minutes ago. Does okay. that coincide with the sell-off, Joel? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. So yep. we were given we were given it to saying it was the data. It wasn't the economic data. It was Apple that was bringing us that down in the market. So talking China iPhone shipments. This is, again, coming from Bloomberg. Shout out to Bloomberg. China iPhone shipments fell about 33% in February. We got the level. I mean, we'll just talk about the recent low of the move here. You had a trio of lows at the 168, 70 area. You didn't quite, where, ooh, where did you get to there? Uh, 169.11. So there's a spot. If not, if that breaks down, another leg lower here in Apple, uh, leading the S&P. I, I do yeah. think the durable goods were a little bit hotter than expected. So the combination. But if you just talk about just a negative news flow, and yeah. then they try and come out with the positive news flow. Uh, you know, oh, yeah, we're going to partner with Baidu on AI. Like, are, are you kidding me? I mean. Where where is that coming from? Uh, re with respect to the lawsuits and stuff, and I see uh, what Kramer questions the legitimacy of the lawsuit, and I uh, read some stuff. And I mean, this stuff takes a long time to play Big out, time. right? And so if you're not, you know, um, if you're waiting for like an eminent decision on that, you're going to be waiting for a while. But right now, uh, charts not not indicating anything I, good for Apple. I wish we had Christian still on here because I'd want to ask him about this apple chart here right now too because this looks a lot like the biogen chart um what was the other stock that he gave us it was a biogen chart and then the the bearish one biogen and uh himx that was himx these all look similar apple looks like it's just clinging to this 170 area here and eventually it's going to take a headline that you know drops it down i think apple's going to make new lows here on the year and i think it's going to make them soon so not a fan of the stock chart, not a fan of the valuation, not a fan of like we continue to see disappointing numbers here from Apple. They need something to turn it around right now. Um, Apple's not in, not, not, not in. Out of favor. Uh, Out of favor. Not in favor. Not in favor. It was Bostic that said it yesterday. Chat's oh, yeah. all over their chat is so smart. They always like, just ask the chat. This is the best. Re this is the main reason I do the show just to talk with the chat. Because they always got everything behind it. Raphael Bostic was the one who said one cut only this year. I put a little bit of damper on these bulls, so we'll see. They're probably the three. We probably still go with three. Yeah, they, they they probably are the same ones that are ripping you on Twitter, Dennis. So don't be. Uh, no, everybody. No, everybody in our chat. <laughs> hey, well, Eddie, we already said we already figured it out. Ninety percent of the people we get along, we love, and then we have ten percent that just hate my guts. But we like them too because they give us good ideas and they challenge our thoughts. <laughs> So we like 100% of our chat. We love you, chat. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. We had, we do have a few minutes left. Let's see if we've missed any big headlines this morning. Um, DWAC, you're missing. DWAC yeah. becomes oh, dull. DJT, Trump Media Technology Group. And it is up another 22% after rallying 20% yesterday when it was DWAC. So we have run straight up into this. And I'm wrong. Like, I thought, you know, this would be a sell the news event. It's not. It's a buy the news event here. So um, I thought it was going to go the other way. This, maybe this turns not into, the case this, so far. This turns into DJT today? Right it's now. DJT yep. right now. Wow. Yep. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, Donald J. Trump. DJT. <laughs> yep. Yep, you have um, two long-term precedents in this stock. Uh, first longer-term precedent is uh, there was a stock, DJT, before. Uh, that stock went bankrupt, went to zero. Um, also, <laughs> so no, I'm just going on his – this is nothing not opinionated. This You're going to get a, some people hating you on this one. Well, Keep it's going. historical precedence, Dennis. You can't argue with the charts, right? And then the <laughs> other the other thing is, is – um. It's a SPAC. So what, what, what's the SPAC's done? It, again, be very careful. Trade anything you want. Invest in good companies at reasonable valuations. This is not a reasonable valuation by any stretch of the imagination. The company basically has no revenue here. And we're talking about a valuation. I don't even know where it is now. 
it's got to be upwards of six, you know, two, three. What, what is about valuation on this puppy? Three, three billion. What's it yeah. worth? Um, I'm seeing 1.8 from if I when I look at DWAC from yesterday, but I think it's higher than that. Last time I, I checked, think so it was, too. It was, I think I was, was hearing three billion dollars. Yeah, it was three billion dollars. And so for for context, I was doing some numbers digging yesterday. Um, from and, and they don't really Truth Social doesn't really put a lot of the numbers out. But from what I can tell, they have like a million active users or something. And Reddit has a hundred times that, but is only three or five times more valued Reddit stock than DWAC, even though it's got about a hundred times a hundred more, more users. A hundred times more users oh. and then five times the valuation. So somewhere the math isn't really working that right there. So if you wanted to just base it off of like, okay, how much is a social media company worth on active users? DWAC or True Social doesn't really have that many. And we do, like you said, Joel, we have precedent. There are other of these alternative media companies that have tried to go public, whether it be Rumble, um, Parler, or Gab. Those two didn't go public, but they they tried and, and they weren't able to attract enough users. So I'm very skeptical of the long term story here. Trading uh, it is a completely different story. Yeah. I mean, if this thing keeps running today, then you know we've yeah. seen meme stocks continue to rally. I'm not yeah. going to call a top on it. So trading one thing long term. Like you said, Dennis, I think this is way overvalued. When the story is hot, valuation doesn't matter at all. But once the story cools off, it's all that matters. So the story is hot right now, so the stock can go anywhere it wants, anywhere it wants. But when the story starts to cool off, that's when it gets more interesting as a, you know, a story from the short side when it starts to cool off. The story has not cooled. This story is red hot right now. But they can cool in a hurry. So you got to be careful. But I would not invest a dollar into this. I would trade it, maybe. But I would not invest a dollar into this at this valuation. It's nuts. Um, all right, doing some quick math. So apparently, uh, so True Social, according to Similar Web, has about five million users. Okay. Reddit, on the other hand, has eight hundred and fifty million users. <sighs> so you know you have. And it's only worth three times as much, or four times as much, maybe, because right. Red, Reddit's going up. <laughs> Reddit's going up ten percent every five minutes. It feels like so. We haven't talked Reddit incredible move yesterday it is the reason the meme trade came back yesterday i believe reddit just blasting off from 45 to 60 after hours hit almost 70 here um it's at 65 right now this is incredible movement here this reddit is wild to trade i actually was trying to trade it a little bit here um it, you actually people are saying can you borrow it can you short it you can um, the short right now at IB is 49.75% a year, which isn't even that crazy. Sometimes these newer ones can get into the hundreds or 200s or 500%. So it's there. Um, if you've got a locate, you can short it. I'm not saying I'm shorting this. Just, you know, curious. You know, a lot of times you see stocks that you cannot borrow really can go up because you can't short them. But this is not the case. You can get a borrow at certain places on Reddit. It's just expensive. Yeah, and I don't think you have options trading yet on Reddit. Yeah, they uh, are. Uh, oh, I they think are. they are. I Starting think Reddit yesterday? options started. Yeah, I think they did. And that's another reason that the stock is in full blast off mode here because the options are out. People are coming in here, buying calls. They're pulling the whole meme trade that they did with GME. We'll buy the upside calls and those options. Those market makers will have to buy the stock to hedge themselves up. I mean, so yeah, they are trading. They are out here now. Options are listed on the stock. So yeah, I mean, maybe maybe True Social really just monetizes its users a lot more effectively than Reddit, and that's why you're seeing, you know, that despite the fact that Reddit has a hundred times more users, uh, it's only about five times more valuable right now on the market. So uh, we'll see how this story plays out. Again, on the top, we mentioned GameStop as well, reporting after uh, after the close today. GameStop had a big day yesterday, so that could be one to watch. You go on Reddit today, you're gonna see Reddit stock trending you're gonna see dwax stock trending or i guess uh djt now you're gonna see gamestop stock trending so those will be some volatile stocks to watch today again if you're trading them have fun with them do whatever you want but long term i mean you know might be a different story for some of these long names. term invest in good companies at reasonable valuations you know if you're looking at something you're saying it doesn't make any sense to me I'm not going to invest there. But can I trade it? Absolutely. You can trade anything as long as you know where your out is. Don't get caught holding the bag and all of a sudden the stock starts saying, I was like, I can't take a loss. If you are a trader, write this down. If you are a trader, an actual trader, you have to take losses. If you don't, eventually your entire trading portfolio will be full of losers and you will start to see your capital erode. Nothing is 100%. 
but the traders that refuse to take losses eventually end up with a losing portfolio. So just keep that in mind. Investing is a different animal. Long-term investing, you do lots of different things. I like to not hold my losers as much in my long-term investment portfolio either, but your time horizons are different. Uh, but trading, cut those losers, folks. Um, all right, guys. Well, it is 9 a.m. Eastern. That means it's time for us to wrap up. Joel, you've been quiet over there. What, what's all, what, what's going on? You got no, any final thoughts? I'm just uh, getting my uh, my final thoughts for you guys here today uh, on this, like I said, synthetic Wednesday because the markets aren't open on Friday. Um, I just I kind of like the opposite. Like yesterday, you know, we were down like 15, 20, and it, it just didn't feel like we were just going to have big tank day. Couldn't take out the pre-market low. That pre-market low was defended. We had a rally. I'm kind of thinking opposite today. We already have faded a little bit off that pre-market high. So I like to see us get up near that area, test it. If it doesn't fall through, I think you look for a little bit more of a fade. I just think yeah, I think you just have an unusual day coming on Friday. You also have the end of the quarter. You have your PCE data. I mean, I, I think I think traders are just, you know, they're just they're, I think they're trimming as opposed to like super loading up on the long side or go. Oh, I got to be short going into this number. I just think it's uh, going to be another quiet day and then perhaps a quiet day tomorrow uh, and then Thursday to uh, the end of the week. Uh, I believe uh, Tim Seymour coming on tomorrow. Uh, we're nice. going to dial up Tim. Good time to talk about pot stocks and hockey. The wings yeah. in and out of contention for the playoffs. Wings looking better a little bit lately. Um, just final thoughts from me here too. I think it's just such a mixed market. You've got you know your leaders of leaders, Apple, which feels like it just wants to continue to go down. You have Nvidia that continues to go higher here, so maybe those you know just offset each other. But it's a very mixed market. You have some stocks performing very well and other stocks just not performing well at all. It's the market of stock selection. It's the market of rotation. When one stock's going up, another stock is going down. It's keeping the overall indices just kind of flatlining here. You know, we're drifting higher, you know, but really over the course of March, you know, you look at the queues, we were 444, we're 446. You know, really over the course of the last month, we've kind of gone nowhere. And that's because of this, you know, this just the continued rotation and the continued market that just doesn't want to buy everything or sell everything. We mm -hmm. sell this, so we buy this. Eventually, you'll get into a market that's going to buy or sell, but it's going to probably take, you know, some inflation data point or it's going to take something that, you know, kickstarts that because right now it's the market of rotation. All right, guys. Well, we do have live trading starting up right after this. This stream will redirect you there. Make sure to come back tomorrow, 8 a.m. Eastern. We will be catching up with Tim Seymour. Till then, happy trading. Stay green. And again, today we should see some volatility, especially in those meme stocks. So it should be an interesting day. We will see you guys tomorrow morning. We'll <laughs>